It's time to welcome an athlete who has given so much to the sport of mixed martial arts over the years. But next up, it's submission grappling, and she will be welcoming Danielle Kelly to one championship. It's May Yamaguchi. May, great to see you. How's it going? Hi, everyone. I'm great. Um, training every day, and I'm almost ready for the fight. Looking forward to it. We're going to go across to our media questions, and we're going to start with Tom Taylor of SCMP MMA. Okay. Hello, Tom. Are you there? Hey, guys. Can you hear me okay? All good. All right. Uh, May, great to be chatting with you again. Uh, last time I spoke to you, you mentioned that you're training with Sakuraba, Imanari, uh, a bunch of you know real Japanese legends. Now the training camp's almost over. How valuable would you say those guys have been to your preparation for this match? Well, um, everyone is killing me. They're trying to break my leg and knees and <laughs> I'm surviving every day. So uh, I think I got better of getting out of that leg locks and all the submissions. So it, it is great. Very cool. Um, Danielle is of course a very decorated submission grappler. We all know what she's about. What would you say your biggest advantages are in this matchup? Well, um, yeah, I have a lot of moves from MMA, uh, aggressive moves, and of course the physicals that we use in mixed martial arts. So I want to use, I want to mix that and the submission, the jujitsu moves. Awesome, thank you. Onward we go to Dylan Bauka of Sports Kita. Hello, Dylan. Hey there, May. I appreciate you making some time. Hi, thank you. I'm just curious because you've been with the company for you know close to six years now, fought mm -hmm. for world. Like, what's the feeling competing on this 10th anniversary card in the context of your journey with one? It's it's really great. You know, I see all the faces I know, and I. You know, we're the point that I, I like about one championship is that all the athlete knows and we cheer each other and we all always have a good conversation at the event. So I'm really uh, I can't wait to see all the people in the card. And I know this event is going to be big and we're going to have the audiences back and, you know, everything is great, great opportunity. Yeah, stacked card for sure. And to that point, the Co He Hom Denise Zamboanga rematch, two individuals you have a competitive history with. Like, what are your thoughts on that particular fight? You know, it's pretty difficult. Um, Zamboanga is always pushing. She has a powerful strikings, and um, also I. I saw a lot of moves on the, um, like the wrestling moves. I think she's improving in that point too. So um, I think she'll try to take Sohi Ham down and probably go for maybe uh, the ground games maybe. But um, if Sohi Ham can stop that and go for her, her striking, she will have a lot of chance in that field. And mm, I, I hope um, Zoe Ham wins because we know each other for so long time. And if we can fight in one championship again, that would be fun. So, but I know there's there's same possibilities in both both fighters to win. Yeah, for sure. And then lastly, from me, because Salkuraba was mentioned earlier, a legend in MMA and also a big profile in pro wrestling. Is that something you'd ever be interested in doing some pro wrestling, maybe learning from Salku a little bit? You know, I love pro wrestling, but um, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not used to all those moves jumping around and use that rope and stuff. Kind of, <laughs> it, it's kind of scared to like flip and jump down from that height so I don't know about that but um I love submission so 
Um, there's a lot of chance for grappling. I, I might try. So not in pro wrestling, but grappling, that's okay. Yeah, we're well, looking forward to that. And thanks so much for the insights, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan. I think you've already hinted at this one with the mention of uh, a legends meeting between yourself and Shohi Ham. But we do have a text question from Luisa Morales of Philippine Star who asks, do you anticipate a return to MMA after this grappling match? Yeah, of course. Um, if there's a chance, I'd love to. Um, there's a lot of girls I have not faced yet. So if there's a chance, I, I will. I, I would love to go back to MMA. We've seen you compete for the belt. Are you thinking of legacy, are you thinking of a title run, or are you just thinking of great matchups and, and competition as a martial artist? You know, if there's a chance, I would love to challenge the belt again anytime. But it, you know, five round is so tiring. So <laughs> it's okay to um, fight against new newcomers. Um, I'd like to go both. Uh, on that note of five rounds being challenging, what do you think of a single twelve-minute round? What are the advantages and disadvantages for you there against someone like Danielle Kelly? Um, I've seen Danielle's fight, and I see a lot of submission in early, early rounds, like one minute, two minute, you know. So, um, yes, it goes longer. I think I have the advantage, and I. I have a physical strength and yeah, if it goes longer, I think I have more advantage. Interesting. Our next question comes from Nick Atkin of SEMP MMA. Go ahead, Nick. There we go. Uh, hey, May, how are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Loving the shirt, by the way. Um, are, are you on oh. the ground now in Singapore? I'm sorry. Can you? Are you on the ground in Singapore yet, or when will you? Oh be no, tonight? no, I'm in I'm in Tokyo, and um, my cat is running around, and I'm sorry if it's kind of <laughs> annoying. <laughs> oh I, yeah, I was gonna ask how are the cats doing. I always check in with you about the cats. Thank you. Uh, whenever I start working like this, they they start running. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm always worried about that. They're getting anxious. Do they know that you're heading off for another fight? Can they sense it? Yeah. This time, one of my cat is sensing pretty early and she's, you know, she's becoming a baby. <laughs> it's, it's cute, but <laughs> I, <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have to hold her all the time. It's kind of cute. Oh. Well, I, I wanted to ask you just about the the experience you're anticipating in fight week. It's going to be a bit different to the last few you had because you, you've done, you were there, I think, you know, the last time there was not, a, I mean, the first time there wasn't a crowd and you've done a couple since then, but how's it going to be just having people around you again, having fans there and doing media days on the ground and speaking to journalists there and things like that, um, you know, presuming we do have those things lined up? No, it's fun. Like um, when there was no audience in the stadium, uh, I thought it's it's okay, you know. You don't. I just need to fight in the circle and just need to concentrate on what I need to do. But um, actually, on the last last match, I think there was a little bit of that cloud and. Um, Actually, it gave me a lot of power. So like this time, I heard there's close to 5,000 people in the stadium, and that's going to be fun. And I know they're good. everyone's going to give me power. So you know, I want to show everything I have, and it, it sure will be a great one, exciting match. Do you anticipate having the support of that crowd? Because, you know, they've seen you have a couple of title fights with Angela. They know you. Um, you think you're going to be the one they're cheering for against Daniel? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and Daniel is kind of cute, young. And I know she will have a new fans in Singapore. So I, I would love to share the crowd cheering. 
for both of us. And Andrew touched on it briefly about the 12 minute round. Um, have you spent a lot of time looking at the rules specifically and just making sure you know what you can and can't do? Because I think we, we've had a look at the rules here at SCMP and some of it seems straightforward, but there are a couple of things that um, might be harder to remember in the heat of battle. What do you think? Um, actually, I, I was trying to check on that rules, but I thought it was pretty simple. <laughs> um, it's basically from the MMA rules without the strikings and um, yeah, 12 minutes, I have to make sure how, make sure to not use the power in early minutes. So I, I will have to be careful in that point, but um, except that, I think I'm kind of okay with it. All right, and just one more for me. I think Dylan already asked you for your prediction about um, Harm and Denise, but what do you think of that main event, Angela and Stamp? Who have you got in that fight? Well, um, uh, yeah, if Angela can take her down and go for submission, I think she will finish. And... If Stamp has power to stop that, um, there, there are chances for Stamp to survive and win by stri striking. But um, if she's gonna do that, she, it, I'm sure she has to go for five rounds, I, I think. So I, I think there are, possibility for both of the fighters, but um, thinking about the techniques and total total um, power and techniques, I think Angela will, will win and defend the title. All right. Thank you, May. I uh, look forward to seeing you on the ground, hopefully, and good luck for the match. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Onward we go to Timothy Wheaton of Calf Kick Sports. Hey, thanks so much for taking my question. Uh, I just have one question for you. Your next opponent, when you made your MMA debut, she was just 11 years old. How does it feel fighting across so many different generations and being a trailblazer in the sport? Um, yeah, recently there's so many young fighters and I kind of think about that, you know, when I debuted there, they were only the elementary school kids, you know, it's kind of weird feel, feelings, but um, yeah, it's great to fight for a long period of time and feel those kind of, you know, changes in, in the surrounding fighters. Um, but, you know, young, young people learn fast and like, you know, thinking about other sports, it's kind of, um similar thing happens and i always respect them so i respect and learn learn a lot of from young fighters so um yeah i can't can't wait to fight great thank you very much thank you mate i was curious given mm -hmm. that you're working with two legends of heel hooks and leg lock submissions in imanari and sakuraba has it been discussed, the Tan Lee-Gary Tonin fight? Did you watch it? And I was wondering yeah. if that's talked about in the MMA community and, and maybe what their response was. Yeah, um, I was watching and everyone was watching, chatting about that fight. Um, most, most of them, the legends was talking about the, um, the setup. Mm -hmm. that, that was spectacular, you know, they, they were saying about those things but um from the MMA fighter point of view um it it was like if she, if um if that happened in like second or third round there was a lot of chance to finish and heel hook but I think he went that too early so you know that's the point that you have to be careful in MMA you know so 
I, I learned that, uh, um, like uh, training with all the legend in the uh, leg locks fighters, I kind of, I'm kind of start learning heel hooks and stuff. So I kind of think about, okay, what if I go from the first round and, <laughs> you know, that, that came up in my mind. But, you know, when I saw that fight, I kind of, okay, I'm not doing that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a, I got a good information. So kind of thank you. Well, the good news is Danielle won't be able to do what Tan Lee did on the 26th. <laughs> yeah. We'll go then to our next question, which comes in via text from Kitinon of Kaosod. Atom weight is stacked right now. Who do you think poses the biggest threat apart from yourself, of course, to the championship? Oh, hmm, that's. Um, I don't know. I I hope um I want to see Sohi Ham versus uh, Angela Lee. But um, yeah. So um, Angela Lee has a big advantage on the ground. But you know, I know Sohi Ham for a long time, and she's really flexible. So. Maybe she can get out of all the submission and finish and striking, but um, I would love to see that card. Me too. That would be an absolute cracker. Excellent choice, May. Yeah. All right. Our final question then comes in from MGR Online, who asks, with an ever-evolving roster in one championship, matchup possibilities are endless. Is there a dream match you want to figure in regardless of promotion? Hmm, that's hard. <laughs> Well, um, hmm, let's see. Well, um, since I'm a woman fighter, I hope some of the one championship champion fight against like Delco or UFC champions. That would be fun. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's been talked about last week as well. Mate, it's been so good to have you as ever. What a legend of the sport. We can't wait to see you compete on the 26th. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.